Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Morning Market Review. Today is Monday, it's the 6th of March. My name is Russell, Russell Shaw, I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXM, and uh, my email address is arthur at fxm.com. Just going to go ahead and bring up the high risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey, Howard, morning to you. You had a good weekend. Hope you had one as well. Uh, welcome to everyone. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Um, let's take a look at the market commentaries disclaimer. Morning, Damir. Nice to have you on the webinar. Thank you very much for joining. Hey, Andrew. Morning to you. And uh, our references, just keep this on screen for a few moments. All right, um, I want to just start off, uh, I want to show you this chart. Uh, this is the chart of gold. Just keep this in mind, we're going to come back to it. Uh, gold looks like it's about a move into zone one here. Uh, that's the zone between the upper red and the upper blue, um, but we've got a big week, all right, and I think that gold moving here uh, is potentially um, important for us to keep a, an eye on. Now, what happened on Friday, something interesting, is that if you take a look at this dot point here, this is the ISM non-manufacturing. ISM non-manufacturing came out on Friday, but this is a very specific um, part of the report. This is prices. So here we're looking at the services prices. And uh, if you take a look at how it's really come down, you can see that it came down quite uh, quite markedly, which is different. Earlier, earlier in the week, we had the manufacturing prices. Manufacturing prices ticked up, this ticked down. Um, the uh, US economy is actually a service-based economy, so this is very important. Um, it's still quite far from the all important 50, um, but the idea is there always is going to be inflation. They just want the inflation to be at a, a, an average uh, rate of about 2%. So this coming down towards 50 is heading in the right direction. And um, what happened, there was a rally after this uh, number came out. And the reason for that, if you take a look at the core PCE, so this is the core PCE, the second series. And then I've got a correlation between the two. So I've drawn a correlation between the services prices and the core PCE. Now, um, generally, you can see that it stays on the positive side of the correlation. Only very rarely does it sort of uh, move below. Uh, if you go back to the um, global financial crisis, it kind of breaks the uh, it breaks the um, correlation there in a meaningful way after about uh, a year or so. But the idea here is, by and large, the correlation between the services prices and core PCE are, um, are positively correlated. And you take a look at what's happening now, it looks as if the correlation is starting to tick up again. That's a good sign. In other words, the core PCE needs to start running down, following the services prices down, and uh, that would take a lot of pressure off the Federal Reserve. So this is quite an interesting series that came out. What happened subsequent to this uh, number uh, or this calendar event being released? If you look at the 10-year rate, this is Friday, you can see how it's really broken down. This is the 10-year, let me rephrase the 10-year real rate coming down. So the real rate starting to move down, it's broken this, uh, this trend line. A trend line doesn't mean that the trend's broken, but it does mean that the momentum has come down. And then, interestingly, okay, is that we want to see if the dollar follows. So here's the dollar. So the dollar hasn't quite broken down, but there is some red. And here's the NASDAQ. In other words, the real rate has a positive correlation to the dollar. The real rate has an inverse correlation to the NASDAQ. If we go back in time, we can see this. Uh, here is the real rate moving up. Okay. Here is the dollar moving up. Here is the NASDAQ moving down. Okay. So the dollar is positively correlated. 
the NASDAQ is inversely correlated. Here's the real rate coming down. Here's the dollar coming down. And here is this on an absolute basis, we've got NASDAQ starting to move up. Okay. And then we've just got the real rate break down. It looks as if the dollar might break down. And if uh, the correlations halt, the NASDAQ probably ticks up. Now, we've got to be very careful this week's got some heavy information. We've got Jerome Powell testifying on Capitol Hill on Tuesday and Wednesday. He's testifying uh, in front of the Banking Services Committee um, tomorrow that tends to be market moving. We've got to be very, very careful. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. I think it's 5 p.m. ZA, uh, 3 p.m. UK. Uh, let me just double check that. I don't want to give you the wrong dates. Uh, let me see if I can find that information very quickly. Yeah, 5, p 5 p.m. ZA and 3 p p.m. UK. And that's going to be market moving. That's going to be uh, uh, tomorrow, and then another committee, the Financial Services Committee, on Wednesday, and then Friday is that non-farm payroll. The non-farm payroll is going to be very important um, this week. We've got a live trade, by the way. We'll do a live trade. Um, remember, the last one was a surprise: 517,000 to the upside. That was a huge surprise. We want to be very careful with what happens in the um, in the markets this week. But it does look, by and large, just at sort of on the face of it, as if the real rates are coming down. It looks as if the dollar is shaky. It looks as if the NASDAQ is um, supported. Now, remember, we looked at gold. So what we want to do now is uh, go to the dollar and gold. Look at the correlations there. So let's, let's bring that up. All right, let's bring in the uh, dollar underneath us. And let's just bring in a correlation coefficient. And here, look at this, the correlation coefficient is heavily negative. In other words, as gold moves up, so the greenback moves down. And we've got the inverse, we've got this negative correlation. That brings us back to this chart here. Take a look what's happening to gold. It looks like it's about a cross from zone uh, two into zone one. Remember, beware what it looks like it's doing and might not we might not get that follow through. It very much now depends on the uh, the testimony on Capitol Hill. And I think it's going to be hawkish, but let's just see um, how the markets react. So you can see gold, gold moving up. Let's bring in the US dollar here. All right. The US dollar here looks like it's about a fall from zone one into zone two. Okay, so as dollar moves from zone two into zone one, looks like uh, we're going to look. Looks like the dollar is going from zone one to zone two. Now uh, we want to just keep an eye on that because if the dollar does drop down, well then it seems to be a risk off. Sorry, a risk on a bigger one, a risk on type of environment. So let's be very very uh, smart about this and keep an eye on what the green best doing. See if dollar uh, and the uh, and the precious metal gold are moving in those opposite directions. Um, let's take a look and see what's happening on the euro as well. Just while we're looking at, so it looked to me when uh, before the ISM came out, it looked to me as if the euro was breaking down, and that was completely off. It was actually moving up. So if you take a look at this on the hourly chart, I actually sort of picked this for a, a potential wedge here and it did initially break down here's the wedge breakdown and then what happened was then what happened was the ism numbers came out and it was just 
moving moving away. So those ISM numbers were really important. Um, and it's, it's, it's good to see because uh, we need sort of small wins when it comes to the inflation story. We were seeing a moderation in inflation. Uh, services inflation has been extremely resilient. To see it come down, I think, is quite, um, is quite important. So now you can see we've moved from zone three into zone two. Well, on a relative basis, that's a movement of strength. We're moving up. Okay, if we take a look at it on a weekly basis, it could be, it could be that we're getting the next higher trough here. Uh, by the way, I need to show you something on gold. I need to show you something interestingly on gold. Okay, so you can see that this could be, let's make this a uh, question mark here because we don't have confirmation yet. Okay, we don't have confirmation yet. I want to show you guys something on gold. This is something that you don't see all the time. This is something that you see, it's quite a rare technical signal. Look at this. Look at this uh, candlestick here. It's an outside day, okay? We often talk about an inside day. This is called an outside day. In other words, it completely, completely is um, outside the range of the candle of the day before. What I'm trying to say is, this is the range of the day before, okay? This is the range of the next candle, and it's a bullish candle. It's a tremendously bullish candle. So gold over here has got a very strong looking technical setup. What makes me very sort of nervous is just the news items for this week. What would be quite interesting, and I, I'll, I'll put this forward now, and I'm going to tag in subject to correction. What would be interesting is if we get a much lower non-farm payroll and uh, the week started off with this outside period, this big outside period, and almost as if it was foretelling, for dare I say, that, uh, that 517,000 that we saw uh, on the previous print was an outlier. Now, I don't know if that's the truth, if it is going to be an outlier. There's no doubt that the job market is resilient as can be. Um, but 517,000 certainly was a uh, very heavy number uh, to the upside. Um, I want to take a look at one more chart. And then if there's any questions, you can go ahead and type those in. I want to take a look at the, uh, the, uh, the DAX. So let's do a top-down analysis of the DAX. Okay, so the DAX has been extremely resilient here. Trough, peak, higher trough, higher peak, and this higher peak, probably we can put this here. We can put a can put a higher trough here. And we'll see if there's going to be a higher peak. So th this this little guy here is a higher trough. Uh, so kind of one, two, two, three. I, I would have preferred perhaps a deeper pullback, but it is what it is, right? And now we'll see if it's going to get any sort of traction. Um, let's go through to the. Now, what happened with the? Uh, what happened with the? Uh, what happened with the DAX here is very interesting as well. Take a look at these two candles. So we're going to take this candle all the way up to this candle. So we're looking at Thursday's candle and we're looking at Friday's candle. Where's the open? The open's here. Where's the close? Close is here. Okay, put a little uh, box so we can make it a candle. And look at this for a strong, isn't this a strong candle? Isn't that a strong candle? So there's a lot of bullish sentiment. Moreover, that bullish sentiment comes in at a squeeze. Okay, so the depth is looking really uh, interesting at the moment as well. So a lot of money uh, rotating into the European markets, led obviously by the depth here. Um, if we go through to the hourly, um, so the swing over here has probably sort of um, 
pretty close to running its, its course. I mean, to get involved now, uh, you'll be getting in quite late. I mean, the, the cross was given right down here. But uh, some sort of pullback here, I think, would be compelling, right? If you take a look at the one, two, two, three. Okay, so the central pivot is very interesting. What's even more interesting? The S1. Okay, S1's got overlapping overlapping uh, resistance turn support. So the central pivot of the S1 levels are definite uh, levels to keep an eye on. Why do you want to keep an eye on those? Well, what you can do is remember that uh, markets never move in a straight line. They zigzag. One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to see where there's a logical uh, correction, the logical end to correction, where the pivots make very good um, sort of latitude lines on a map almost, right? So uh, single pivot or the S line here. Uh, uh, yeah, we did take a look at the Euro, US dollar uh, hard. So um, what we'll do is um, I'll, I'll put this on the um, I'll put this on the Telegram. But yeah, uh, we were taking a look at moved from zone three into zone two. I'll put it onto Telegram. Uh, any other questions there, guys? So. Just to reiterate, the technicals are looking very interesting. It looks as if there's a breakdown in the real rates. What's the uh, sort of the, the X factor, the fly in the ointment, so to speak? Testimonies on Capitol Hill, non-farm payroll later in the week. If we get hawkish uh, testimonies on Capitol Hill, that may act as a headwind against the technicals. If we get another blowout on farm payroll, that may act as a headwind against the technicals. Now, the uh, DAX is looking really interesting as well. Um, it's got this huge bullish candle if we combine uh, Thursday, Friday, and now perhaps the central pivot, S1 pivot, look compelling in terms of areas that may pull the bulls back into the market. Um, I don't see any other questions, so let's conclude at this point. I wanna wish you guys a good day, uh, a good evening ahead. Remember, we do have a live trade this Friday, and I'll give the, um, the link out uh, from tomorrow. All right, guys. Yeah, have a good week as well, Anna, and uh, we shall speak soon. Cheers, guys.